perfect sense. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to move on to part number two of okay. our discussion here, guys. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about this. Um, we're going to talk about this. Yeah. What, what is this about? You know, so we're going to be discussing this a little bit and we're going to pause here, watch this video. And at the end, we're going to give our reaction. Is that OK, guys? Listen, this might offend a lot of you. So, you know, I will say maybe this is the time you turn the volume down if you don't want to hear some of this. But again, we're going to be honest with you. Yeah. What we think on this. So let's watch it together without pausing it. And at the end, let's talk. So, so can I quick ask, can you um, if you're comfortable enough? When you give your response and your reactions, if you can say what race you are in the comment. I mean, okay. obviously we're black. Yeah. He's Haitian. So he's even, um, he was he didn't grow up in America. So I'm sorry, putting you out there. But yeah, uh, so he's they, from they Haiti. Know it, they know it yeah, already, know. so that's fine. I'm from America. I grew up in, a, um, in the outskirts of the city, went to primarily white schools. So I think we both have a very different view view mm -hmm. and so we know you all will too a lot of times our experiences kind of shape our thinking and this is why we're here to learn grow and move forward so let's get into it yeah let's get into this it is, guys this is, this is different let's watch this team together and and then let's do a little bit of discussion after that all right we got half that my headset on all right we're all reading the comments top left all right all right, let's do this. I think what annoys me most about white people is when they pretend like they're the victim. <laughs> What's also annoying is when they, you know, when they kill us. What is fragile about whiteness when everything has been constructed around it? Every part of who I am has been distorted or criminalized. It's really just a bunch of white lies. <laughs> We're storming the Capitol! You're not patriots. You're ridiculous. One of the definitions of American whiteness is ignorance. White mm. people, we are not your problem. You are. Should white mm. people today feel any responsibility for slavery? <laughs> Hell yeah. White Jesus or black Jesus? Jesus was not white. Think of geography. Ain't no way Jesus walked around with blonde hair and blue eyes. White culture fears the end of the world. For us as native people, the end of the world already happened like multiple times. Symbols and monuments, these are mementos of racism. Bring that statue that. What about TCBY yogurt or something? Everybody can get behind. <laughs> the truth has to be told about history. We have to make sure that these stories are told from our perspective. There's always hope, you know what I'm saying? We don't give up. It's about obliterating systemic and institutionalized racism. This is a wild place, y'all. It's a wild place. I know Harriet and Frederick be up there just like, what is they gonna do? Do we need a minute to pause and gather our thoughts pause, here? Pause, process. Well, quickly before we say anything, guys, Mike, Tad, Crosby, thank you. Best thing about this trailer is the comments and ratio. That should give everyone hope. P.S. I'm white. Hmm. Thank you, Crosby. Appreciate that, Crosby. Wow. So wow. have you gathered your thoughts so far? Wow. My, the first question I want to say is, what is this about? Wow. Where is this going? What is his purpose? So one thing I'll say that I learned um, when I was in my world cultures class was that there were a series of books in the South that um, made slavery seem like it was, it said it made it seem like it was a kind and compassionate relationship that mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. slaves had with their masters. So that was um, impactful for me in that from what we know about slavery, there was nothing really kind and compassionate. It's a, you know, they worked in the fields and they enjoyed their relationship with their masters. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's books, um, I don't know what they're called, but I think that was something that I felt like that was wrong to mm -hmm. give an improper and to give a, um, to give the wrong, mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. I, I can't find words, but basically, 
to give the wrong idea of what slavery actually was. Mm. So we have history, right? Mm. History runs through America's veins. It runs through the world's veins. And history needs to be delivered in a way that it's it's raw, it's real, and it's authentic. Yeah. So we're not going to try to we're change not, we're not history. Against that. Yeah. I'm not against that at mm-hmm. all. So I'm trying to figure out what the goal is here because this sounds more like an attack an attack on white people mm-hmm. and like in your face type of thing. So what is the goal? What is the narrative that they're trying to push forth that white people um that white people are just bad people and mm-hmm. white people have all the authority and they've built this country around white people. That's mm-hmm. this is what it sounds like they're saying mm-hmm. where I would say we do know that slaves existed amongst all races and all mm-hmm, cultures. Mm-hmm. We do know that slavery um, itself was horrific and it was a huge atrocity. And then we also know that there was the Japanese Americans, there was the Native mm-hmm. Americans who after my world culture class and just digging deeper into that, I actually felt worse for the Native Americans. Mm-hmm. And un- unfortunately, I don't, I don't hear them the way that I hear black people. I want to comment on that quickly, and but I want to say one thing. Again, um, the goal is, what are you trying to do with this information here? The trailer doesn't tell the whole story. So yeah. we can't really, like what is the we goal can't really run here? with this trailer because there might be more than what we are hearing here. But the thing is, what is the goal? When, yeah, you, when, you, when, you, when, like... when you're dealing with a, a situation such as sensitive as it is, and you put something out like that, where are you trying to go with this? And the second thing I have to ask is this. Without even looking at the documentary, which is not even out yet, but this trailer is getting enough heat to the point where they even turn off the comments. So here is the thing. Let's imagine. Let's imagine, right? A bunch of Caucasian people, white people, they make a video and put it Hmm. on YouTube. And they highlight everything that might be wrong with some of the the black black community. Mm -hmm. They say black people do this and they are the janksters. They are the this. And some of the stuff they might be saying, oh, shoot. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think the response is going to be from the black community I and the world at large? Down. They would get the documentary shut down. Oh my goodness! I don't, think, I don't even think you will make it on YouTube. You will even get it uploaded. They will. YouTube will shut it down before it gets uploaded. I think they have a plan. Do you guys I see what I'm saying the, here? The, the plan here, because it's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make sure history is clear, it's concise, and it is remembered. This is why we have Veterans Day. This is why we have President's Day. All Mm -hmm. these things Mm -hmm. were super impactful, and some of our history is bad. We have the Holocaust. We have the Holocaust Museum. We have the Black Black History Museum. Mm -hmm. So we have all these things because people do need to know what their history is. A lot of issues come from, and even myself, I want to know more about my history. I want to know more about my people and other people and what other people have experienced. I absolutely loved my world cultures class. Quickly, Leah Underwood, I think you're right. Series, this series is designed to continue continue to divide. Exactly. This is just a a divisive Mm -hmm. mechanism that they're using Mm. again to promote this black versus white because there's not just black people and white people in America. Mm. I understand what black people went through and mm. I'm with you. I'm with you. I understand it. I am black. I've experienced um, nigger on my food trays and being uh, alone at school because mm-hmm. I just didn't fit my hair being talked about being called a grease machine. Like I experienced all of those things. I experienced someone saying, I bet she doesn't buy anything when I walked into the store. I've experienced racism on mm. many levels. Um, I've, I'm a nurse. I walked into a room just a couple weeks ago. They said, oh, finally, housekeeping's here. Just the, the thought process of how people think when they see black people. They don't necessarily, sometimes they don't necessarily see us as being capable. Mm. I think, and I think that's true. But now here's the question. Why do I think it's true? I think it's true in some cases because, number one, we keep promoting these division, the the division. We keep promoting it by keep talking about how much we're oppressed, how much we're being put down. I'm telling you, if you leave it alone, Mm -hmm. out of sight, out of mind, and just focus on doing you and doing what it takes to, I believe that there are um, 
that there are forms of systemic racism that exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Jim Crow laws, they were put into place to be able to filter through and to keep some people from being able to obtain jobs. Um, I worked for a company, Nurse Family Partnership, which was a phenomenal company, and we would receive a lot of donations of books. So we got these books and it talked about, the books talked about, um, they talked about mm -hmm. emotions. So we would go see first time pregnant moms and we would help them rear their children. Mm -hmm. So these books talked about emotions and every emotion that was attached to a negative emotion had a brown or black child in it. Mm -hmm. And all of the positive emotions was a white child, with red hair, so in that blonde sense, you hair, see that, brown hair. You see hair. that concept of systematic racism right in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and some of the children and children's books and different things. So mm -hmm. there is, I do believe, and but I, that but I also is believe still there. Yeah, I, I can I, understand it. I also believe though that you don't have to give out the book. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. and the person who showed it to me actually was a white woman. By the so way, let thank me you. Thank you, Deborah, for wishing my wife happy birthday. Thank here. you. Appreciate you. Yeah. No, we should not be judging historical actions using modern ideas, morals and ethics. Yeah. Wendy, I, I, I agree. You're also down. on point. I was going to say, That's guys, you mentioned something about the, the Indians, the indigenous, indigenous people. Right. Yeah. Here's something I've learned in my studies. Mm -hmm. Did you know? that they themselves actually not only had slaves among themselves, but they used violence to conquer many other tribal Indians in the land. In their own. In yeah. the, of their own. Yeah. So when this was done, although believe, I'm not justifying what was I do I'm not justifying what was done to it. Okay. What I'm saying is it was a very normal thing back then to wage war. Who has the big guns, who has the bigger muscle wins the battle. It was a normal thing. It's like a you know territorial type of war. I'll yeah, go so there, I'm stronger with, than you, and I'm kicking you out, and I'm taking over. It's not good from either side, yeah. but the point I'm trying to say is that was a very normal mindset then. Well, it just runs through and through history. Yeah. I mean, you look at how people conquered the world. Alexander mm -hmm. the Great, like, there was a conquering, there was that. So now, have we acknowledged? Uh, it, it's about acknowledgement. It's mm -hmm. about being able to say, okay, these things happened in history. Uh, what is the growth mindset? Okay, uh, a pie, uh, Nova, you said something here that is so good. You said... Trailers like these are oh, actually polarizing and burn exactly. bridges. Yes. As a result, it gives the impression that they don't want to resolve issues. No, they just they want, want power over. They want power over and above. Uh, it furthers the divide. Listen, can I quote you a little bit here? <laughs> that was so on point. Yeah. You just summarize everything we're trying to say here in a single paragraph i appreciate that yes well every done. country we want to acknowledge uh J C I B M E. thank you for the super chat thank you guys and we uh put you on the stand thank, thank you for, you for the you birthday do. wishes still we appreciate i want to to uh talk about what shannon lasky said every country has history mm -hmm. it's history let's talk about what's going on now mm -hmm. we have history we have our days to celebrate history we have time we have months to celebrate history it is time to move forward people it's, it's time, time to, move to on. let go of hurt and pain mm -hmm. the problem with people letting go so what we understand about ourselves is right we're humans with our emotions when we don't let go of something what does it do it festers it eats us up it takes us from um, being able to be productive right in our own selves just mm -hmm. as a human being mm -hmm. so when we hold on to things that are negative in our life or that have happened to our past we understand what those consequences bring mm -hmm. you can become internally sick you become unproductive, you become dark, you become irritable, all those different things. So what is the difference when we're as a as a society, as a country, as communities, mm -hmm. holding on to pain, mm -hmm. wanting to make sure we splatter the pain in everyone's face so they see like, hey, this is what I've been through. You need to do this for me. You need to understand what I'm going through. You need to understand how I feel. Okay, so what do we do to help you understand, to help everyone understand how you feel? How do we move forward? Where are we going with this? Mm -hmm. What is the point in this? They're, she's, they're laughing. They're saying, do white people need to be responsible for what happened years ago? Crazy. At this point, mm -hmm. what are we doing to move forward so that we can start to build bridges instead of burning bridges like the comments said? Yeah. Guys, I want to share a quote with you here very quickly. But one thing I want to say just in, in, on top of what my wife oh, is saying I here. I love this quote. There is a concept, right? The real issue at the heart of these documentaries, what I see coming from a Christian perspective is the spirit of unforgiveness. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. It's really true. 
it 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 it, it has the, it's, it's actually at the root of all of all of this. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that we should acknowledge our history. I can, I agree with what my wife said. It makes perfect sense. We do need to speak about these things, but we also have to look at the history as a whole, not just the portion that associate my race you know there's much more to that than a little documentary here so we have to look at all that aspects of it and the thing is we have to really look at is mike right underneath he has a great point here okay what did you say mike bigotry is based on misconception bigotry Mm -hmm. can be fixed through example or discussion racism is much harder to fix and i agree with that you're right you're right i agree hands down Mm -hmm. with that Mm -hmm. bigotry would be like you know we know what bigotry is right Mm -hmm. racism I believe, and I totally okay. agree with you. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Summon. You, you see, Chuck, you, 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 you understand me, my friend. What did he say? He says healing can't happen wow. until the pain is forgiven. Exactly. Chuck. That's where it's. Can I use you as a baseline here to share my quotation now? Listen, guys, this is coming from. Listen, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not promoting. Pause. I'm pause. Not promoting. Pause. James Brown. MLK once said the doctrine of black supremacy is as evil as white supremacy. That's what it is. The and doctrine, what ultimately is I happening have never heard is they're saying of black supremacy before. They're, and, and the doctrine of black supremacy is basically like mm. it, it, so what what they're saying black people just want to be put on this podi- podium mm-hmm. put on this platform to say this is what happened to me. Mm-hmm. Look at this. See me, hear me, feel me, understand me. Okay, so once we do then what? Where do we go from here? Because you're being, you're, 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 what is your motive? Mm. What is the motive? What is it that you're trying to gain? What is your final goal, your final outcome with all of this? I believe there's racism. I mean, it's obvious. We all have stuff and stereotypes and different things within us that we have to check ourselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. Every race has it because we grew up in a society that. It's just different people, different ideas, mm-hmm. different thought processes. Mm-hmm. And there was racism. There was, mm. it was, there's a lot of racism built in to America mm. and into the world. By the way, uh, Leah, you said, have you seen Larry Elder's documentary, Uncle Tom? I need to check that out. So give me a, put a link on the, hurt on, people, put a hurt link people. behold. Yes, That's Tom, correct. Yeah. yeah, Mike, Mike, again, you are not born racist. You are only taught. Exactly. Um, and to be racist. Taught through the media. Absolutely, Mike. Taught through what Absolutely. our parents teach us. Mm-hmm. Taught through um, society. Mm-hmm. Taught through just how people interact with let each me, other. Let me share your testimony. Because for those of you who don't know, Did we are. Did you read the quote yet? No, not yet. <laughs> but here's the thing. Uh, and I think that's going to, it's still going to connect to the quote. Absolutely. So here's the thing. Somebody from our church, again, we, we like, we like, we overseeing a church. We are assistant. Uh, so there's a senior pastor and I'm the assistant pastor. And my wife and I, we work together. We primarily deal with the youth. But again, it's a majority of them are Caucasian. Okay. One of them came to me personally, came to me after the service and came to me and say, James, I have to be honest with you. And this was during the time when the racist stuff, the racial wars and George, George Floyd, Right, George Floyd, the death of George Floyd and everything, right? So he came to me understanding what's happening in the world. And he said something to me that was very telling, right? And here is this man who never even thought that. He said, James, did you know that I was actually raised and taught to be racist by my parents? Wow. I would have never thought. And this is, some, this is a guy who will hug you yeah. and everything. Yeah. And he says, I had to actually, it was not easy for me. So what I'm trying to say is, understand the mindset of those who are racist. Mm-hmm. It's very good to understand. It's not like many of them love being racist. Some of them, like 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 you said, Mike, they were taught to be racist. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what he said, James, is like, I had to fight against this mindset. It took me, it took a relationship with Jesus to come to the point to see people as people. And again, being raised that way. Mm-hmm. It was not a diff- it was not an easy thing to stop look start you know to stop looking at someone as being less than me because of their color the color of their skin. It is something that th- it was ingrained in me as a child, mm-hmm. and I can look at you, James, as a black pastor, and I can love on you now because I see I see through the eyes of Jesus. Mm-hmm. You have more value than the color of your skin. Mm-hmm. That was very deep for me. Absolutely. And he was being very honest. And the truth is, I know this man, there is not even a a, a, a vein of racism mm-hmm. in him. That's mm-hmm. how loving and kind he is. So now when we try to lump some white people, mm-hmm. white people, white people, yeah. and then when they lump some black people, black people, black people, Cheryl, we get upset. Don't we get upset? Cheryl, right? we want to acknowledge you here. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. I just want to say I'm so glad we can all come together to discuss these things. 
thank you for providing this space. I was late to the stream. Happy birthday. And guess what? I'm thank just you. glad you're here. I am just glad you're here once again. We plan on doing this once a week, guys. So and keep listen, us in your prayer. Those of you who have talked about Tom McDonald, oh my goodness. If this man isn't one who's standing for truth and unity, and if they're not trying to make him seem like he's this racist person, mm -hmm. it's insanity. So I just sometimes sit back and think, what are these people seeing that they call this man a racist? Like, I am black, and I am a person who know, who believes that there is racism in the world. Yeah. When I hear something that is racist, I believe that I pick up on it. That's just There's crazy. nothing racist that he's saying. I have not seen There's nothing racist that. that this Joe Rogan is saying. I what? Show me real race. I If you want to see you real racism... You can find it. It makes no it's sense. It's not what I mean, not to go back into Joe Rogan, it's almost like this is the thing. Here goes a word. Here goes a word, right? So let's call this the word. I have it. I can use it when I want, say it when I want. But if I hand it to this Caucasian person, automatically, you are styled as an evil individual. But it's the same word. In other words, the word in itself and the meaning uh, and, and the intent of the word shouldn't change or define the person who holds it, right? Pause, so the pause. point is, Steve Lauren, I deserve the chance to show you I'm not part of the problem, and you owe it to yourselves. We have so much in common. That's that's Tom. coming from Tom McDonald. That's coming from Tom McDonald. That's well done. That's what we're talking about. And that about. is exactly what it is. People are people. Mm -hmm. People are people. I do, like I said, I do believe that there are some things that run through the veins of the foundation of how things are run in this country yeah. that do separate yeah. um, the races. Mm -hmm. But we can still rise above it. There's nothing that is so, so systemic that you just can't. Mm. It's not like it was before. There's no segregation now. You can like there. I, I don't know because some people might say there is in, in certain areas, but where I'm at, I can go anywhere. Yeah. Right. I have no. The issues. segregation is whether you have a vaccine card or not. Yeah. That's and guess the what? Guess what, guys? That's I've, the I've, I've, I've experienced racism myself. I was told one time, "You're not allowed to come in this house because you're a black man." I was told one time, "Why are you in this town?" I was dating a white girl in this city, and you have no business being in this town. And they were looking at me really, really strange. You know. Um, but again, I knew that what that's what it was. They just didn't like me. They didn't even know who I was. But just so it does exist. All right. But so we're not saying it, there are not some people who are still holding on to these views. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say is, as a as a black man. Whether you like me or not, I have to respect you and love you. And I know that's a mm -hmm. difficult message for a lot of people because they don't have that mm -hmm. Christian mentality. But mm -hmm. here is the quote I wanted to read now to close this because we have to react to Tom McDonald's video. And that's the most exciting part of this uh, live streaming, guys. So here we are now. Now listen to this, guys. Harboring unforgiveness. Like I've said, the real heart of racism in some of these trailers, at the heart of it is unforgiveness. Read the whole quote. Harboring unforgiveness is like drinking poison. And hoping your enemies, enemy will die. Harboring, un harboring unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping your enemy will die. Wow. Literally, that's what that trailer sounds like. It sounds like uh, sarcastic, mm -hmm. humorous, mm -hmm. in your face white people. Spare me your victimization white people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so tired of hearing your I'm a victim. Yeah. Th do I believe that it would have looked a lot different? If it was a mob of black people who stormed the Capitol, absolutely. True. I think there is a certain fear mm -hmm. that has been instilled into society that when you see people of other races, they look more violent. I told, I said in the last um, um, last video we did, I had said that it's so true because me growing up with white people, even though I didn't feel accepted by them, I felt more comfortable than when I was in a room full of black people. I felt a little. Unco a little self-conscious. I felt a little uneasy and mm -hmm. I didn't fit in with them either. So yeah. they called me the white black girl mm -hmm. and then the white people didn't accept me because I was a black girl. Mm -hmm. And so Sh I was... Sh Cheryl gets it. Cheryl gets it. Forgiveness is for us. You see the black community, they have to forgive. We have to forgive. They have to. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't, listen, they're going to talk about this years to come. And guess what? Although these videos, I know the trailers, what their intents are, it's almost like you can tell the, the white community, they are, they're doing okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm saying, Caucasian folks, you, you guys know, you're not ashamed of being white. You don't mm -hmm. go around saying, oh, because they put a video out there, I'm just not gonna. No, you're still gonna hold on to your values. You still believe what you believe. You do the things you do. You still wake up at, you wake up in the morning and go to sleep at night. So who is really hurting at the end? Cheryl, you got it. 
It is the black race. Mm -hmm. So the more they put this out, they are really destroying themselves. Because what are they doing? Now they're digging. Just like they dug to make that compilation video. Just like they're digging, digging, digging. digging. For You're dirt. digging for dirt. So what good, <laughs> what good can come out of digging for dirt? More you dirt. You want dirt? You're going to find dirt. More dirt. You want dirt on yourself? You're going to find dirt. Yeah. You want dirt on anybody? You're going to find dirt. Yeah. Whatever you're looking for, mm -hmm. you're going to find. Because yeah. your perspective. Your thought process, yeah. it's all negative. And then you're so, gonna, and you, then you're gonna look, and you're gonna have this perception going down to the generation of the younger generation, making them think every white person is yeah. like this. White every people, every white, white people are bad. Yeah. And here's another side of the story that most people don't like to talk about. Did you know there were many abolitionists who were Caucasian people? Hold on, let's go to the Civil War. Can we go to school here? <laughs> Can we go to the Civil War in itself? How many white people died for black people, but we just forget about those no, white they're people? Not, they're not because that important. they're not the majority. They're not listen, that important. Listen, supposedly. even with the vaccine, with any narrative that the media and society is trying to push, mm -hmm. they look. People focus so much on the uh, on the majority. Mm -hmm. The Civil War mm -hmm. was a race war, mm -hmm. or and so someone else said that there was something else pushing on behind it because Lincoln wasn't listen, really listen, listen to that. Lincoln wasn't. Hold on one second. What well, Lincoln wasn't really concerned with. He wasn't really planning on freeing the slaves. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I need to look into more. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, that's what they used. That's what pr ended up promoting the civil war. Look at this, guys. Uh, they are trying to start a civil war. Now, exactly. I, 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 I believe you, uh, JC, JC, IB, ME. So here is the thing. Don't you also notice this type of narrative and racist discussion happens a little bit before election? Mm-hmm. The heat gets turned up, mm -hmm. and as you get closer to the election, it's almost like mm -hmm. all these racist stuff start really getting louder mm -hmm. and louder. And it's almost like I can see that he's been also used for political reasons to galvanize a certain mm -hmm. group of people to vote for whoever they think mm -hmm. should be elected. Mm -hmm. So they use that even to their advantage, even for election reasons also. So, I mean, these are things that I'm seeing, guys. Amy Ballard, my family lost their land being part of the Underground Railroad. Like, come on now. Let can, me we talk tell about, you. can we talk about that too? Let me no. tell you. my The people who have supported me the most, we said it before, we want to, and and I hate to say it, but if you're listening, it's not to be rude. It's just to be real and honest. We went to an all-black church, and at, we were transitioning, and we ended up going to a primarily white church. And when we made that transition, we had some, I was having a baby and he had surgery. Mm -hmm. And so we both, we were just both like down. No job. And unfortunately, we had jobs, but we, well, we weren't, weren't working. working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but the white church really came through and helped us. Not saying there were a couple people who brought us a meal or two mm -hmm. from the church that we had moved out of. Of course. And there was no animosity with the move. There was no hate. But I had I grew up in that church, mm -hmm. right? So when you really look at this thing, seeing that they gave us money to pay our bills, to help with the bills, oh, and we were still okay yeah, we're, because we're we were covered for months, for a month. Yeah. Just being honest. Yeah. So, but they gave us. They helped us mm -hmm. in in a way that was um, practical. Mm -hmm. They we didn't get it just a couple phone calls like they really dug deep and they mm -hmm. helped us and they only knew us What were we there three weeks? Mm -hmm. I met them maybe twice So let's just like you're right like, So it, it's just sad to say and, and going through school and going through different things all my life Those people who really supported me mm -hmm. and really helped push me forward and propel me forward Were white people who really said oh you could do this You'd That's be based on that. real personal experience guys this And I'm not lying and, but, I, and I've worked and I work in a nursing nursing home We have years in nursing you know field and facilities and stuff Some of the most amazing people you would meet Listen you would meet amazing black men Amazing amazing black people in all cases Some of the most amazing people you would meet are Caucasian people as well You know I've met them they will give you counsels Older people they will sit there and they will pray with me They will counsel me I mean, come on. People are people. And that's what we have to look at. What we're doing here, we're not trying to pick a race above another. We're looking at the heart of the individual. Mm -hmm. We're looking at character here. Mm -hmm. We're looking at personality here. That's really what we should focus on. Not so much like white people. When you say white people, you don't you don't explain what you mean. You don't like Tom says, you don't take the time to to hate mm -hmm. on the right ones. Yeah. You kind of like See, put an umbrella. Yeah. And when would they put every, umbrella statements on black wrong. people, we go wild, don't we? Put an umbrella statement, all black people are thugs, just all black a people single are killers, one, all black people... Just a single one makes them make, make us go Absolutely. wild. Imagine you go after the entire the people. The entire... So I, I just so want to know what the documentary, so what the goal of this documentary is. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't let my children listen to it. No. I don't understand why they play Roots every year. Amen. I don't understand why yeah. they play some of these movies they play. Yeah, There's history. 
there's history for learning mm -hmm. and then there is then there are movies there mm -hmm. is media there is so all these things that are just kept that they're they're just they have one intention keep wanna... division keep keep the anger flowing mm -hmm. keep hatred alive that's yeah. what the whole plan that's what their goal is 